Poor baby got a boo boo in the front. <laughs> times I'm just kind of feeling like you know what I need to go to Harbor Freight so that's what I'm doing right now I'm taking the old Honda I took this thing on like a 200 mile round trip yesterday to get my wife something off marketplace I got 44 miles to the gallon while I was down and back and that's over two mountains on the way there and two mountains on the way back now I have to service the CVD transmission I'm starting to get a shutter light throttle pulling out getting some little bit of jerkiness and I've read online that uh, servicing the transmission will fix that issue so I did order the fluid we will be doing that we're also gonna service the fluid in the black Murano and we'll probably also do another service on the white one I got filters for it this time so we'll have to drop the pan when we do that um, but yeah uh, keep your CVTs tip-top condition you want to service them like every 30,000 miles around there yeah you know, it doesn't have to be exact it has uh, currently the this has about 90,000 miles on it and I don't know if it was ever done so it probably needs it but anyways about this boo-boo on the Honda I busted the front corner of this lip <laughs> Uh, that 200 mile trip drove the whole way there got to the person's house and their driveway didn't look like it was that steep but i didn't notice that it had a little drainage before it goes into the driveway i pulled in and just heard crunch i was like oh that's that's fantastic so i pulled back off turned around backed in then i picked up all of my my uh pride and pieces of the front clip and uh put them in my car and then I just this morning used the hot staple gun and put a whole bunch of hot staples in there to hold it back together. It's, it looks fine. It was scratched up already from rubbing. So, I mean, I, it has less chance of falling apart now with the hot staples in it as it did before. And this thing's still for sale. But wait until I service the transmission first and then, and then uh, buy it if you're, if you're looking to buy it. Lord Jesus, please forgive me for the sins I'm about to commit. I really needed a longer pair of back scratchers, so I got those. Boys, you already know what that's gonna do. What that gonna do? Oh yeah. I know y'all are gonna find a lot of humor in this, but I got out and then I put this lift arm underneath here um, when I reached down to get it. Now, okay, let me show you my tire machine. Notice the handle right here. Okay, so when I grabbed it, I went like this and I bent over and I was half an inch from entry. Woo! I'm telling you, that son of a bitch right there. It's got a little bit of play in it, but it's tight. Oh, that sucker, it was like, Perfect placement. Yeah, I won't do that again. I feel like that's a little safer. Maybe maybe I ought to keep it like that from now on. Oh, are we? Let me get my headlight on here and I'll show you what we're working with here. I want to do a service on this transmission. I'll tell you, my, my transmission fluid in my white one, it was, it's dark, okay? And every time you service one of those, it's going to be dark. You don't get all the fluid out. It's, it just gets dark, okay? And it don't matter how many times you change, if you're going to change it multiple times, run it, you know, and stuff like that. You might get it pretty clear, but um, I'll show you what it looked like, what came out of uh, my white one. I filled this jug up so I could see how much now. You can see, you know, how dark it is in there. But you can see as soon as I take it away from, we got, we're getting a storm right now. As soon as I take it away from it, you can see through it. So it's not... It's dark, but it's not crazy dark. When I uh, hooked the cooler up on this thing, I remember seeing the fluid and it was dark. So the cooler is part of 
the radiator. You can see those two lines right there. Uh, this is the transmission cooler right here, part of it. And then it runs to the tran or the radiator where it runs through it. Um, we're gonna have to drop this shield. So this is the drain bolt, although you see you're not gonna get all the fluid. So I am gonna hand pump some of this out because you're not gonna get it all. But then on top of that, if you're gonna do a full service, now I did get the filters, but I'm keeping them for mine. There's one inside the pan right here. This is the interior one, which is where that dome is on the oil pan, because this is the pickup, the pickup tube. So it's going to be like right here in it. You see what I'm saying? That's going to pick up your fluid and run it through the pump. And it comes with a pan gasket with it. So, yeah, mine's going to get that eventually. Mine actually works pretty good. I'm not, no complaints with my Murano. And then there's one more filter on this thing right here. And this one, you also have to take a cover off for. It, it looks like just a regular paper filter kind of. And you can see there's a gasket with it right there. And this goes right here. So there are four cover bolts. There's that gasket that's sitting right there. And this, which goes in like this. So I'm just showing you that now because I will eventually get onto it with mine. But what we're doing is draining it here. This is the, the level marker right there. When it's running, it's gonna flow out of here. Yes, I'm pretty sure that's it. So it's weird because this looks like, they look like they sit the same level, but I think it just, I don't, I don't know how that works out. <laughs> I just know that that's where you fill it at and that's where you drain it on. So it's looking like we got a little over two and a half quarts. Actually, we probably got 2.7 quarts, something like that. I don't know if that's sitting level or not. Um, I thought I was going to get a tube in there to suck out fluid from down here, but that is not the case. I don't have. It's got to be a small enough tube to go up in and angle, and uh, I can't. I can't do that with what I got here. So. That's not gonna happen. It was tough, but I did get more fluid out. Look at this little little hose right here. I had like I had a vacuum hose, and I heated it up and stretched it over this little nipple here, and I pumped it. I got it in there, and I probably got maybe ten pumps of fluid through that hand pump. So, you know, that, it adds up. It, that helps get all that dirty fluid out. But you can see it pretty dirty. I mean, I guess it's. Probably no worse than what mine was, honestly. I thought it was worse than that. But we haven't done it on this yet, so let's go ahead and get the fill plug out. And uh, I have to get a magnet down in here because I dropped the drain plug down in it. Uh, once I get that out, get it in there, then we'll uh, start with the fill plug.
right, that was fun. Okay, so I put three and a half quarts in this. I'm assuming that I lost some hooking the cooler up and stuff. Probably not a whole quart, but I this will run out. So I got to get up in it, and I got to get the transmission up to operating temperature. You got to shift through the gears, you know, just like an automatic transmission, but, I mean, well, like a conventional automatic transmission, only it's a CVT, same principle. You want to go through the gears, go to each one, like five, five to ten seconds, shift to the next one. Um, once it gets up to operating temperature, you're going to take this plug out. It's just finger tight right now. It should have a, a steady stream coming out and you want to wait until it's you know a real thin stream almost a drop coming out and then put the plug back in i i watch youtube i'm a, like practically a professional now excuse me as my brain's not braining today so you want to make that a whole lot easier don't fill it through the check plug <laughs> it's in there it'll be fine that's where the fluid goes fill it through the fill tube on the top <laughs> Should have had a V8. So this is going to be the last thing I do here today. I'm going to come back out. We're going to start body work. But uh, I'm going to use this scanner, not the one I just previewed. Although it is a good scan. The one I just, you know, did a review one the other day. It, it is a good scanner, but I want a Bluetooth one. So I can still check the temperature while I'm not in the vehicle. Yeah, and I can put it up on the lift and have a scanner because there's a temperature range. Oh, there's a temperature range and a booty size, so you can get in your vehicle when the lift is here. Oh, try not to touch my feet to the floor because this thing's so clean now. It actually smells clean in here, too. So we're going to start her up. As you can see, I don't even have a scanner on yet. Oh, yeah, I also got uh, new things here. Didn't put them in yet, but I got them. Well, the AC's cranking. That's nice. I'm going to freeze out. Let's turn it to 70. That's comfortable. Okay. Oh, this thing got an update. Let's go ahead and do that. While it's updating, I'm going to shift through the gears. I'm so glad I got that transmission shit fixed. New problem to figure out. I'm telling you, just I'm not, I'm not winning with this thing. I don't know that I put it together right. And hear me out um the clock spring or something you know how when you put it in reverse they bring the reverse lines up my lines aren't straight and my wheels are straight here i'll show it to you all right so right now the wheels are straight <laughs> look at that and i'll show you that here's another way you can tell look look how far look how far over that went oh did, did it, is it going to recalibrate? No, it's not. Let's look at this. That's all the further I can get that way. That's straight. <laughs> so I do have a light on the dash. And I'm pretty sure it's because of, because of the steering angle. Doesn't look like I'm getting any codes. That's the bad thing. There it is. ABS. ABS, which is probably going to be the steering angle. So we'll see what, what it says. Might just have to re. I'm hoping you can just recalibrate it, but I don't honestly know. I'm just a DIYer, kids. All right. So I don't know how. I'm, I guess I'm supposed to drive this. It says drive vehicle straight forward and keep the steering wheel in neutral position. I don't know that I can do. Well, let me get this thing up off the ground. I might be able to do it, but I don't know if that's going to work or not. Oh, oh, well now, let's see. Oh, look at that. All I had to do was put the wheel straight. We got her, but now the lights are still, I got to clear them now. That, that's all I had to do. I had to calibrate it. All right, so the fluid is slowly going up. I'm at 109 fluid temperature here, so. I'm going to continue doing this until I get it up to like 140-ish. They say like 170 to 180 is the optimal. Uh, that's why I'm going to do like 140-ish 
and that way it gives us a little bit of room there, a little bit of time um, for the fluid to run out. All right, kiddos, so don't worry, the drop's coming off that. That's actually condensation off the air conditioning because it's working. Okay, so we're currently sitting at 156. I'm gonna pull this plug. Now, I only put it finger tight. It has a rubber O-ring on it, so it should come out pretty easy, and I hope I don't get myself burnt here. Well, we might have to add some fluid, boys. Well, that wasn't hardly any right there. There should be more than that coming out. All right, well, let me let me put a uh, let me put another quart in this thing. Shift it some more. I don't want to get out of the operating range. So, where am I at now? 156 still. Let me put this back in. I mean, this thing might have been low. I'll get my ladder to get up in and put fluid in. Right now, darn it, I put this thing on and it's right there and it's hard to get. You got to get, there's a clip on there you got to get loose to even get it out of there. So I'm just going to go ahead and do this and then I'll get back to you. All right, so I started with half a quart. I'm not going to put a full quart in because I don't want to drain that much out. I need some. I only got four quarts left to do the, the white one. It's down on the street. It dropped the temperature to 149, putting that in, it cooled it down some. That's still in the operating range. So let's go ahead and take this plug out now and see what happens. Okay, now we have a little, like the stream, like I was talking about, a light stream coming out. So we should, in sense, that should be about the right level. Because it's just about a drip right now. So this thing, it, it was low on fluid. What's that fluid look like now? See, it still looks dark, you know what I mean? You see what I'm saying? You're never going to get that dark tint out. It's But the fluid is cleaner. So, all right. I'm going to go ahead and tighten this up and say it's good. So that ended up taking four quarts in total. We didn't drain that much out, but that's how much it took. So I'm going to spray that off. We're going to be done here, and then I'll see you guys tomorrow. So as you can see here, we got the Vivor storage bin, uh, plastic storage bin, that's what it's called. Plastic storage bin, there's the model number. Um, they sent it out to me to do a review on. All I did was, thankfully, I just got a package this week, which destroyed my retaining wall, we'll talk about that later, um, that had a piece of wood in it that was perfect for this. And I was like, oh, look at that. I don't have to trash it. Also came with more wood, but... I didn't know if I was going to need it, so I brought that in. But this is a nice piece of wood, if I do say so myself. It's hardwood. No pun intended. <laughs> Anyways, it comes with six of these um, wall mount uh, hangers. They're made out of plastic. These are not the screws that came with the kit. They do come with screws. Um, plenty of them. As you can see, they come with plenty of wrench hangers. And then there's a whole bunch of bags of screws. As you can see, there's a bunch of bags of screws and um, drywall anchors. So if you want to hang this on drywall, you can. The only thing I wish there was like more of was maybe these. So like you can hang your wrenches on here. You can hang them on here. See them? Let's uh, move these up here. Now I don't know that all of these will hang up here. 
but some of them will. If I could hang all of them here, I would honestly rather have them here. Oh, look at that. All but the tent. Oh, nope, nope, nope. The tent's not going to work, so I'm going to put them right back down here. But it's it's just nice for organizing your garage. Now, I mostly, after they contacted me about this, wanted this because of the bolt storage bins. Now, I'm sure you can probably buy more of those, but it's a very easy system. They just hook onto these mounts like that, like so. Now, see, when you're restoring cars, it would be nice to have something like this. You could have one bin. Now, they got these little label things. You know, they didn't give me any labels with it, but you can make, like, little tiny labels. You could put, like, front bumper, rear bumper, uh, core support, stuff like that, and then all the hardware from that stuff, you can drop in these bins. And then, whenever you're putting the car back together, you can go, oh, here's hardware for the front bumper. Oh, here's the hardware for the back bumper. Here's the core support like bolts, you know what I mean? Like headlight bolts. And it would keep everything organized, whereas of right now, my organized system is shh. If you guys want to get yourself one of these storage bin units, there's going to be a link down in the description. Hopefully they give me a discount code. If there is, I'll drop it down there as well. But it's very easy to hang up. I think what's going to happen is this metal storage bin that I got at a yard sale that I have really no way of hanging up i guess i could screw it to the wall but it, the only thing i don't like about this is like hardware gets way back in there and then i can't really see it it's dark back in there and then like i gotta dig through these to find stuff and you don't really see the stuff in it it's, it, it's just like when you have them out like this now you see i spaced them out you couldn't you can set these practically right on top of each other but then you have less space and that's why i spaced them out just a little bit more so you can get in there you can grab stuff you can knock the bins over and then it'll do a domino effect and knock five more over but yeah very nice setup it also helped me clear a little bit of room in my toolbox now i could go grab a bunch of other stuff and bring out here and then it would give me even more room in my toolbox but i think i'm gonna i'm gonna leave this kind of I, I might i have some specialty tools and stuff that i just kind of like hang on things and might use that for this I, I don't know i don't know yet but it was it was a nice gesture and i'm glad they sent that out to me so thanks vivor and now i know you might feel bamboozled but that's probably going to be the end of this episode i have things going on listen this summer i <laughs> a lot of these videos that have been pre-recorded a long time ago i have not nearly had the time this summer to work on the projects like i wanted to to get to nail like i should have had this thing done a month ago okay but i just have not had the time to put into stuff and youtube unfortunately does not pay the bills so i've been getting stuff done and doing stuff around the house and all kind of other things going on and it, i just have not been able to work in here and i need to get the honda in here because I need to do a transmission service on that thing. I have not sold it yet. Still have it. Still enjoying it. But it has a shutter. I got CVT fluid here. And I also got new front rotors because they're a little warped. So I'm going to go ahead and pull that in here on the next video. And do that. And then hopefully get back into the Murano here. And, and knock it out so I can get on this truck. I have not been watching the auctions because I'm not trying to win anything. Because that truck should be number one priority. And I know a lot of you have been saying it, but it's it's kind of hard when you don't like the thing. Okay, I like it, but I don't. I don't like working on it. I I, I found this out over time. The old the old vehicles. I'm not enjoying it near as much as I thought I would. So if you like this video, smash that like button. Consider subscribing. Hit that dislike button if your mom wants to come over and organize my tool. And we'll see you on the next episode of Art
come say hi to the people. Hi, Sully. What do my hands smell like? Oh, they must smell good. He licked them. Hi, Sh Sheldon. What? Come here, Sheldon. Come here. Why well, you licked my arm? Stewie has some sort of obsession with my white tank tops. Why do you keep pulling them out from under the bed? So I have like a storage bin for my white tank tops under the bed and Stewie gets in it every time we're not in the house. And he pulls them out and he walks around the house with them. Normally there's three or four of them laying around the house. What is wrong with you, son? So, he's seeing my, my retaining wall out there was damaged. And then I have been remodeling this whole room here. This room was just storage. We never remodeled it. It was only room in the house we never remodeled. So, we have finished remodeling it. And, uh, it's really nice, actually. And then I, I even put, like, fancy... Let's see, the fancy glow lights and stuff in here. Look at that. You see that, Sully? Huh? And then this thing right here. We just got this this week. This is a sauna. And I don't know, I was at work when it delivered. And the delivery guy was driving a semi. And my wife went down and said it will be easier to deliver it to my in-laws, which is half a block away and the truck driver came up my driveway looked went back down and said oh no i can do it drove the semi up my driveway now i'll have you it is like the steepest street in this town um drove the semi up here unloaded it then he didn't have enough room to get turned around drove it through my retaining wall on the way down and took out Lots of blocks, drug blocks down the street. I had to get a guy down here with a dozer to pick them up because they were so heavy. They're big, old rocks. That whole retaining wall was built by uh, like prisoners back in 1970 or something like that. And yeah, it's, it's and it's leaning over, and they destroyed it. So it's getting redone. It's going to get redone. So that's one thing. But then I had to put this thing together, which thankfully it's in really good shape. This I do really like this this sauna this thing I, I feel great the day after i use it every morning i wake up it's gets up to like 150 degrees it's got red light therapy all kinds of stuff and it, it's it's not a steam sauna it's a infrared like sauna cats are kind of scared of it because we were sitting in it and they come in and they wanted to know how to get us out solely was meowing and walking around it trying to figure out how to get us out of it he thought we were in a prison <laughs> do you need help he's like save me look at all these beans look at them all don't he spread his beans for you there <laughs> look at all these beans he's just, nope <laughs> it looks so awkward take a bite of the people All right, Stella, you say goodbye to the people. You want to say goodbye? Well, there you go. Bye-bye.